Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. We did a class last night that was really fun, a live Zoom class where we taught people how to utilize um, some of their nature set number 11 in a mirror card type of formatting here. You can get some really dynamic looking three-dimensional results from a two-dimensional process just by the utilization of some silver cardstock and a folded piece of uh, cardstock, whatever you want to make it from. Merging um, whatever type of um, scene you want up top here with this mirror card area, getting this kind of two, you know, two dimensional piece that looks very three dimensional when you uh, view these pieces at an angle like that. So I'm going to show you how to do an super easy type of application um, using nature set number six. This was another set that, we, that was used on a previous Stamp Wars before. So I thought I would show um, some of those participants that might have watched that show and bought this set how to use this set in a mirror card type of situation. But we're going to show you something that's really fast, okay? And that's... Um, combining the mirror card type of formatting with photo stamping. And what photo stamping is, is just merely stamping uh, on top of, usually it's a photograph of some clouds or something like that. Okay, you can do sunsets, um, any type of sky type of setting. Uh, if you have a photograph of uh, northern lights or something like that, you can even download it or something of that sort. But I have a bunch of photographs of some clouds that I just took myself, and they're just generic looking, you know, photographs. Sometimes there's uh, some really great cloud formations that I've shot. And uh, for me, um, if I was getting a lot of these printed out, a lot of times I had maybe six, you know, uh, sets of each photograph printed out, so I get multiples. And I just did them at Costco, I think, uh, on these ones here, you know, since Costco doesn't have um, their photo department in store now, but you can still order them online. And sometimes like Shutterfly, you can get, I don't know, whatever it is, 100 free prints or something like that, you know, for free, you just pay for shipping. Okay, but these types of photographic prints, you can print them at home as well. Um, you probably have some photo paper lying around from those old days when you used to buy an inkjet printer. And, uh, you know, it came with whatever, two packs of free Canon paper or something like that. But to format these pieces like this, it's really easy. You just take, you know, um, a double side uh, sized piece of cardstock. I like using black so that when I have that seam in here between the mirror uh, foil silver card or gold in some situations and my other piece up top here um, that seam doesn't show up and it usually it's less visible if it's black. But anyways you just fold this over. You can take your time doing a bone fold you know uh, fold or whatever. You lay down some um, tape down here and you just put this in like this, fold it over, give it a good crease, and then what you have is your foundation for this piece. Now this one right here is a four by six right here because that's typically what you, uh, the size you would order from, you know, if you're ordering prints online, it's four by six, um, what is it? Five by sevens. There's a three and a half by five as well, but I don't know. The four by six usually fits my, um, I don't know, whatever sizing convention a little bit better. But this is where this will go in here, and you can see that reflected type of area right in there. Okay, now you have to decide which area looks, you know, kind of better up or down. I think this one looks really good right here. Okay, now. What this represents right here is all the water area within a scene. So imagine there's um, land up here or something like this, and this is the body of water, the lake or pond or whatever it might be. So when it comes to something like this um, lakeside cabin right here, I'm going to take this like so. And on this type of paper, um, photo paper, you can pretty much use any type of ink you want, um, except for your oil-based pigment inks, okay? Like a VersaFine Claire, which 
is a beautiful, beautiful dark black ink if you're using the black one. Um, that prints out really well, but on some of these types of papers, like um, the one I'm using here, I don't think it's ever going to dry. Now you can emboss on it, but that changes it a little bit. So I'm just going to use a standard dye-based ink. You can use a Stazon, that'll work just fine. But the dye-based inks, believe it or not, work really fantastic on top of this type of paper. No problem. They dry really fast. Um, uh, the types of printer, inkjet printer paper that you get for your home inkjet printer too, they're often made for like dye-based types of inks and thus this type of emulsion on here dries just fine. Okay, now see this right here? This isn't the base of the waterline right here, okay, on this stamp. This area is right here. So those, these are reflections down here, okay? So I'm going to aim more for right here. So I'm just going to line up this little area. If you go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, it's not going to matter, okay? Don't go, you know, three inches up or something like that. But if you're off, you know, an eighth of an inch, quarter inch or something of that sort, not too big of a deal, okay? Okay, getting a good print in there like so. Yeah, I missed my little print in there a little bit for some reason. I will add in a little bit more trees like that. Sometimes it's good to see that type of thing there. If you're using a stamp position or even just do it again. But I am just going to take these trees from right there, okay? And I'm going to wipe off this other area like so, okay? And dry it off pretty good. Yeah, let me see. Let me be a little bit more uh, complete with my ink removal here, okay? Okay, so my little trees right here are inked up and I'm going to fill in that little open area. It didn't, it didn't miss completely. Now, I don't know if something's on that piece of paper too, but let's just see. Okay, go down like that. So you see, I'm kind of printing it lower. I'm not trying to match up. I'm just putting in some additional trees in there and no problem. We have that little area like that. Okay. And then let's get our bearings and see what this is going to look like on here. Okay. We have our little lakeside cove right there reflected in that water area. Okay. Now this bottom portion, this is specialized ink we have to use on here, but it's an ink luckily that, you know, a lot of us have, um, there's archival inks, the stays on ink, um, is a solvent ink. Uh, you gotta test it out, see if it'll stick. See how dark it is too. Um, I forgot what they were saying on the, uh, in the class last night when it came to archival inks versus, you know, the stays on, which is just a, you know, um, a line within a, you know, specific brand. Okay. But that is something that's going to stick on this type of paper and dry just fine. It'll dry, I don't know if it's instant, you know, instant meaning, I don't know, within 15 seconds or so, but I would say that's a pretty accurate time frame right here. I'm gonna use my pine tree right here. We're gonna keep this really simple. We're not gonna go with a, you know, I can go with more images down here in the foreground if I want to, but let's just go with one other stamp. And then I'll show you how to make a little tweak too. I'll show you what this looks like. I guess, remember when you're stamping on top of this, sometimes you're gonna stamp it out and you're gonna skew it a little bit, okay? You gotta get used to stamping on, it's basically, it's almost like you're stamping on glass, a very smooth surface. Most of the time when we're stamping on something, our surface is absorbing some of that moisture as we're making the impression. In this case, it's not all of that moisture is staying all on the surface of this foil. There might be some micro pores in there, but it's not enough to really notice. So what you're doing is you're pressing onto the surface that's not absorbing any of it. So you're dealing with this liquid underneath. One of the things with the stays on ink, it dries fairly fast. So, um, you know, you're not having to worry about that 
kind of sliding. I used to use Brilliant Sync for this area down here, which dries on there, um, but it 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 it, uh, it stays wet for much longer. Okay, let's go with a little bit irregular here. Let's go with uh, three trees on this side, two trees on this side. You notice I'm changing the height a little bit with each impression, just so there's it doesn't it gets rid of the monotony. I don't want like five trees kind of equally spaced across the front of it. Look like a picket fence or something like that. But let's take a look and see what this foreground here will look like on here. Okay, get your stays on ink covered up so it doesn't dry out. Here's the top portion like this. And let's see what this looks like this, like this, okay? See those? You get that dimension right there. When someone opens this up, you get those cloud, that cloud movement down there. You know, that's what they're looking at at first. And look at that scene in there, okay? Now, if you want to, you can... Um, color that little area in if you have some water-based markers or we stamp that out in dye-based ink. So if I want a little bit of a brown tone on that cabin, let's just do that here. Okay, now I can tape this in. This card can be done in, let's see, this video has taken, we're at the 11 minute, 21 second mark, okay? But this card basically took 11 minutes to do. Now I already had the paper cut out, you know, down here and I had this one pasted in, but it wouldn't take much longer than that. But let's just, amp this up a little bit, okay? Uh, let's take some alcohol markers. Now the alcohol markers work on this emulsion coated photo paper just fine, all right? But if we stamped it out and stays on, don't use the alcohol markers, otherwise it's going to put, you know, that solvent ink back into solution. But it's since it was stamped out in water-based, coloring with these types of markers, alcohol markers is not going to be of any problem at all with smearing, unless you, you know, if you're, uh, dye-based ink was super, super juicy, then you might give it a few minutes. But mine, I don't think was super juicy, so I'm going to go on here with um, some little bit of a tan color. I don't go in with a really dark brown right off the bat if I'm going to use a dark brown or something like that. I kind of build it up really slowly so I can really control it. So there, see, there's a little bit of a tinge of a warmer t tone. Here's a little bit of a darker one. You can do like different sides of the cabin, a little bit different. Here's going underneath the eaves a little bit or making some of the wood grain a little bit darker than others so it's not completely uniform. You know, if you had a painted house or something like that, then you might get some variation. But if it's like natural wood, you wouldn't have so much of that. Let's go a little bit darker yet. Let's go with um, this color brown. Let's test it out. All right. And maybe I'll use this for the shadow areas like about like so, okay? And just kind of blend it around a little bit. This one's pretty dark here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the darker version. Then I'm going to go in with a lighter version again and go back into that and blend out that darker application of brown. You can use a blender pen or something like that. Um, sometimes you can't do it for you know, like if it's been setting up for days or something like that, but normally you can get it and uh, with no problem. I'm gonna color in some of my rocks a little bit of this warmer brown too, okay? So you get that right there, all right? And notice I, I left my window um, light like that. You can put even a little bit of yellow in there maybe. Why don't we try a little bit of yellow and see if we can kind of put a warm light on the interior, okay? There's a little bit of a kind of a pale yellow like that. It's just a slight warmer tinge like that. Okay, now let's take a look at this again. And there we have that cabin in there. See that reflection area down there that brown is reflecting in our mirrored area. If you want to, you can stamp out additional trees to the side and as opposed to, you know, making this look like an island or something like that, okay? Um, but here's what I'm going to show you now. Okay, this is, you know, I think this looks like a great card. You can stamp a quote stamp up here. You can stamp a quote stamp down here, a word stamp, whatever. Um, you can stamp a fisherman down here, uh, birds in the sky, whatever you want, okay? But let me show you something that I believe takes this kind of from you know, a very basic 
scene. I think it's very dynamic with the mirror card um, formatting here. But let's take, here I'll just even use some hero hues. I'll use, use some basic white pigment ink, okay? 100% cotton, cotton ball, okay? This synthetic types of cotton balls don't work for me at all, okay? They're not absorbent, they kind of wick moisture, okay? But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this cotton ball and we're going to ink this up, okay? A lot of your pads, your white pigment ink pads are super juicy, so be careful that you don't use too much of this. Mine is kind of more medium, but here's what we do. Some cotton balls really fray, and you don't want that, so you kind of just squash it down like this. This one, I don't know, this one's a really good one here. I got it at Kroger, you know, Ralph's. <laughs> okay, but it's nice and flat, as you see. And there's, I don't have a huge amount of ink on mine, okay? But if you do, you know, test it out. I was showing people how to just test out their, um, their cotton balls. Okay, so you just test it on a piece of paper like this. Now see this right here? I'm matting that down. Look at that, there's barely anything. Let me tap it once. Okay, I mean, I pushed it in there decently, but that's all I got. That's what you want there. That's the consistency you want, okay? You don't want this. Okay, that's going to be too hard to control. But see this? Where you're just barely tamping it like that. Imagine you're putting makeup on your face or something like that. Or you're putting makeup on a kid's face for Halloween or, you know, something like that. And they're like a toddler, okay? That's the amount of pressure you want to apply this with. Now, let me show you where I'm going to put this, some of this, okay? Now, see, we have these white areas in the cloud like that. If I want those to look a little bit kind of, you know, we already have some of that softer area in there, like in the background, you can add a little bit more on like this, but see that right there? It kind of expands that cloud out a little bit like that, all right? But here's where it really comes into play. I'm going to add some of this little cloudy mist down here at the base of this. Now watch this, I'm not going to put it all over my entire um, cabin or anything like this. Let me just tap a little bit down here. Now see, it's barely going on. It's barely making it lighter. Try to get this, think about it, you know, achieving it in about 20 or 30 taps, okay? That way you're never out of control and you always have, you're always applying the right amount of it because you, uh, and always look at it too, okay? Now, let me see, what I'm trying to do is I'm applying it there, but I'm also kind of working it this way and working it this way a touch, okay? But I'm concentrating it in one area so that's a little bit lighter there. And then as it kind of transitions out, let me put a little bit here too, now. Okay, so what this is doing is it's putting some mist in front of the cabin. And what is moisture or clouds? They're suspended moisture in the air that's reflecting some light like that so you can see it, right? And that's what this is going to represent too. It's like mist on the water, okay? But it looks better if you don't do it everywhere. I put a little here and a little bit over here. So see this image now is a little bit softer in some areas and crisp. So what you've done on this image is you've really expanded the textural range of it from something that was all crisp to something that's crisp and soft. And you see this little area in here, if you wanna change you know, some of these trees a little bit, it looks like they're capturing some light like this, right? Now, if this is a really super dark background, then you know, use this a little bit more sparingly because it's going to stand out more. But if you have these kind of lighter areas like this, see, that lighter area of the cloud. So I'm putting a little bit of that pigment ink on that tree right there. And over here, so now you have some light hitting some of these trees in here. Okay, and that's it. You don't have to do any more. I mean, you can add more as much as you want, but that can be it. And let's take a look and see if there's any kind of visible change here. It might, you know, I mean, it's subtle. But see that little mist rising off the surface there? And it's reflected down in that water as well. A little bit of a lighter tree right there. It's a little bit lighter down there. But then you have this really mist. I like that mist down there. I'm gonna increase it a little bit out here too. So always get your bearings and take a look and see what um, the additions you're making are going to look like 
not only on the card itself, but also in that reflected area. I think this looked pretty good. And this area got a little bit dark in my photo, so I'm going to lighten it up like this, okay? Now, like I said, when you first start doing this, you're going to get these big blobs because everyone uses way too much ink at first. I don't know, sometimes people listen to me and I think, hey, you did a great job. And they said, well, you just said to do it, you know, really lightly. And it's like, yeah, someone listened. But I get it, though. You know, it's just we're not used to using such a light version of our media. Now, see what I did right there. I added a, quite a bit of this white pigment ink there. And uh, this white pigment ink dries. It dries a little bit more transparent. So um, it doesn't look as white when it dries as what it looked like freshly applied. Okay, so keep that in mind. But that's a good thing, though, because if we apply too much of it, you can wipe it off. Um, but you can also adjust it when it dries and just see what it's going to come out like. Sometimes when it dries, it's like, oh, it was a little bit too white, and then it dried, and it's just perfect, you know. All right, so you see that little mist there? Look at that glowing little mist there on the water right now. All right, so that is that. Let's get this. Um, oh, taped in. Uh, for this, uh, you can put tape to, you know, card like this, but I have that white ink down there, so if I roll that on, I don't want that to come off. So I'm just going to apply it right in here. I just go roughly... Oops, I had some cotton on that right there. Oops. Time for a switch out right here. I have my lot of my crafters tape. When I'm now that I'm doing these um, mirror cards, I tend to go through a pretty decent amount of tape. Where in my first, uh, I don't know, 20, 35, 30 years of stamping, I was barely taping anything. Ready to go. Just take that, throw it in your recycle bin. All right. Oops. Let's get that. And I put one cross like that. See that right there. And then take this. Keep this, don't have it too flat like that. Fold that up like that, okay? And then just take this and go right in here and butt it up right there in the corner. Get it as straight as you can. Go like that. And let's see. I'll just take a paper towel here. Flatten that out like so. If you have a little bit of a seam showing, you can, you know, you can trim this up like this later. See, I have a little bit hanging out down there. So I can trim this off like that if we want to make it, you know, super flush. But there's your mirror card like that. Really fast to do. This is, you know, 20 minutes or so uh, to do this one. And like I said, this would be really great with like a quote up here, um, you know, happy birthday, you know, or something like that. Or, uh, you know, someone's going on vacation. Get better soon, you know, have a fisherman down here, you know, someone enjoys fishing or something like that. Or someone that goes kayaking, put a kayaker down here. And it looks like they're on kind of a mirrored surface like that. Let's do that, in fact. Seems like uh, oh, we could use something down in that lower section, huh? I'll show you how tranquil <laughs> these mirror cards can look. And again, I think it looks very three-dimensional, okay? Now remember, if I'm going to stamp something down here, do it in the stays on ink. Now let's take a look and see what this where this is going to go. I'm going to put this kayaker down here. If I put it too high like that, see like that, then I'm going to be stamping it over that reflected area. I want that cabin to be showing in this reflection, so I'm going to stamp this little kayaker down here, so that it won't you know interfere with the the things that I want reflected up top. Okay, so like this. Okay, now if you ever miss with your impressions down here with your stays on, if you have a stays on cleaner. Um, just take that stays on cleaner on a paper towel or whatever and just wipe it off and just stamp it over again, okay? It'll clean right off of this um, foil. Maybe not all foils, okay? I haven't tried a bunch of different brands, but I, I have been told that the stays on cleaner cleans it off. No problem, okay? You'll get some skewing. Just kind of go into it expecting that. 
maybe do a practice print on, you know, a separate piece of, you know, scrap foil or that one that you've designated as scrap. So every time you do it, you practice an impression first to get the feel of it, you know, so it's not moving around. If you just re-ink your stays on, that's super juicy on your um, pad. And thus, when you're stamping it out, it's super juicy. But there you go, viewing this like this, putting it at a 90 degree angle and viewing it, you know, roughly on that 45 degree angle. But this is what it looks like. Opening it up, look at that little cracker down there and how it just floats on the surface. If you stamp a quote down here or a word stamp, it looks like it's floating right on the surface of the water. I like doing it in white. I don't know if white would show up on this because we have the white reflecting down here. Or you can stamp a quote up here, you know, in black, or you can put a, you know, quote, a word stamp in another piece of paper and paste it up there if you want to. Like I said, some birds up in the sky might be interesting. They would reflect down in that water. But you can get all kinds of different types of things going up here. You know, brayer backgrounds, sunset backgrounds, you know, reflecting in this water. But fun and easy for sure. And I think a relatively dynamic looking scene that looks very three-dimensional. How easy is that to stamp down there? All you're doing is adding that to that. That's one stamp out there, stamped in, you know, dye-based ink, colored with a couple of alcohol markers, a little bit of white pigment ink on the front of it, if you want to, just to vary it a little bit. And then we have a really great card. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section. Hope you like, share, subscribe.